Hi, and welcome to this Composite C1 video. My name is Markus Event, and I'm going to be talking about uh, tree-driven applications in uh, Composite C1. It's a new concept introduced in uh, our 1.3 release, and it will enable uh, site developers to build tree-driven applications in the C1 console uh, using XML. Uh, the target audience for this video are web professionals interested in Composite C1, and I expect this to take about uh, 10 minutes. Okay, so let's uh, dive into the details. So this is the Composite C1 console. Um, just a quick intro to our data system to get some context. Uh, it's uh, extremely easy uh, to do uh, define new data types in, in Composite C1. Uh, I have created a uh, data type for holding uh, news items. Uh, it has some naming. And just like a database table, it has uh, fields. Um, now, it, this also has some information about uh, widgets to use uh, for uh, uh, editing data. Uh, so, uh, defining an element like this will give me a, a data layer and also uh, a UI for adding and editing data. Also, uh, it enables me to uh, to get a, uh, a basic tree structure up and running, uh, where I can say, for instance, I want to do grouping by date field, and uh, I have a title field that I would uh, like to use in an element title and so on. And this gives me uh, a basic structure like this immediately. Now what I would like to demo is uh, how can you go and customize an element like this. Um, and I'll start uh, in, uh, simply. I would like here to, to have uh, news articles to show up. So using our tree XML feature what you can do is uh, you can go to find an XML file. And what I have here is a, a sample file. Uh, I have prepared it, but I'll quickly uh, demonstrate uh, the uh, anatomy of it. There is um, a definition of where we want to have the tree appear. This one I would like to have uh, shown on the content perspective uh, at the bottom, uh, defined by, by uh, this element. Uh, and I would like the tree to uh, consist of first an element uh, labeled uh, news articles and inside that I would like to show data elements of uh, type news. Okay, so here's my XML file in order to, to get it uh, activated inside uh, uh, the C1 uh, console. I uh, put it into a folder called tree definitions. <laughs> now by doing this uh, the system will um, see the file and uh, um, uh, automatically update um, in the UI. So if I go to the console, I now have a, have a news uh, articles um, element and, and some of the test data I've added to the system. Quick, quickly go back, uh, we can see that uh, as the children uh, for the news articles uh, element, this one up here, we're showing data elements of uh, our news type. Uh, I would like uh, to be ordered by date, descending, and I would like to have uh, uh, default edit and delete actions uh, on the elements. So if we click here, we can see we have edit and uh, uh, delete. And we have a small bug there. This is a beta build. I'll just do a fix for this. Here we go. Okay, so we have edit and delete. I'll just quickly show an edit. Now, just to show you how, uh, first of all, you saw that I, I did a label change here and it showed up immediately in the UI. Uh, I can also sh uh, show you uh, a situation where, for instance, since this is news items and we expect to have a lot of those, we would uh, like some uh, uh, foldering um, around it. So what I do here, I uh, added this element prepared. I uh, said uh, around my data elements, I would like some data folder elements. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, group by name. And I uh, have a date format I would like to use. I'll quickly go and refresh here. So we see we get our news items. They're all from September 2009. I'll just quickly go and uh, select a different date. Say so, uh, this while well, we're getting a March folder. So 
this enabled me to, uh, to 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 define different kinds of uh, grouping uh, on my on my elements. Uh, you can group by uh, uh, foreign keys and uh, labels. So you can have a construct like uh, items titled A from A to B and C to D and so on. I'm not going to details with the actual features. I'll just quickly also show you how you can go attach an action. So if we have our news uh, articles folder, I would like to go and uh, be able to uh, also to add an, a news article here. So I haven't saved, saved this yet. I'll just show you here. So I haven't I haven't any actions in this one. If I go into the UI here, uh, the editor, and do a save, and go back, well uh, now I have the ability to go uh, save some data. And shows up. Okay, so uh, in short, this is a, a really fast way to get customized trees. Uh, you can, of course, uh, change uh, stuff also like uh, uh, icons and uh, uh, labeling, and uh, yeah, there's a, a, a good uh, good level of control of, of elements right here. So I'll uh, just uh, take some some uh, samples we we'll already have running in, inside the system. So, for instance, uh, a, a call feature in our 1.3 release is something called page types, and uh, it's um, it's something where we can go and, and attach uh, metadata um, and uh, default contents and so on to to the system. Um, we've uh, we've created this uh, entire structure uh, using uh, the tree. Definition um, feature is defined in here. Now, what you'll notice is that uh, we have something called workflow actions. This enables me to go start a, a specific Windows workflow. Uh, so um, uh, I, I'm not, not limited to using uh, the default uh, add, edit, delete actions that you just saw with the news stuff. Uh, you can uh, go and, and write completely customized uh, user interface. Um, I'll just give you a quick sample. So this is an example of a of a custom workflow. Um, this um, Beside from uh, using uh, default actions like add, edit, delete, and uh, workflow actions, um, and uh, you also have the ability to go and uh, and define uh, more custom actions. What I will quickly do here is I will uh, move in this little demo. Uh, 